Hello, friends and bookmakers. Let's talk about making a book in Blurb Bookwrite. So if you don't already have Bookwrite, just know that it's the free standalone downloadable software from Blurb. It's a wonderful program. It's very simple, very intuitive. Even though I have the ability to use other production tools like the Adobe InDesign plugin, which I also love, I build the bulk of my books in Bookwrite because it is such a great tool. It's very simple to use. So if you don't have it, you go to Blurb.com. And under the Design Tools tab, the first choice you have is Bookwrite. And if you go to this page, again, if you don't have Bookwrite, this is the path you're going to follow. Right here in the center is the Download Bookwrite button. And as you can see, it's downloading to my uh, Downloads folder right now. I'm going to stop it because I've already got it loaded, but that's what it's going to look like for you if you have not uh, downloaded this. And the rest of the procedure is fairly straightforward, and I'm guessing you've done this many times, which is you locate the file in the Downloads folder. You open the installer, and then you're going to drag that Bookwrite uh, app into your Applications folder uh, on your computer, and then you're going to be able to launch Bookwrite. It's pretty simple, and again, I think most of us out there have done this many, many times with many different kinds of software. So I'm going to jump, jump over to the actual program now. I'm going to open up Bookwrite here, and I'll give you a little walkthrough on how this works and then a couple of tips. The first screen that you're greeted with is the basically the welcome screen. And not only does this have the create button, which is going to ask you what kind of book you're going to create, but I just want to touch briefly on these three little options right here. The first one is your books. This is showing a lot of the books that I've made recently, including the book from Albania, which is a magazine uh, that I just made, the first version, the second version, my wife's version. Yes, many, many versions. Um, the next little option you have here is templates. And this is a really fantastic tool because... A lot of us get started on books or we start to, we, we have the idea that we want to make a book and we kind of go, wow, this feels maybe a little intimidating. Where do I start? And a template is a great starting point. So let's say that you're making a family book or a baby book or travel book. You have templates here that can really get you started in the right direction. And all you've got to do is choose which template and then hit create book and it will create a book of that template. It, again, it's a really good time saver and a great starting point. So I'm going to close that for now. The next option you have here is tutorials. So these are all very simple, tool-specific tutorials that you can watch. Uh, if you have, you get stuck on any particular object, item, idea, etc. You can also find these in the Blurb YouTube channel. I'm going to go back to your books, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create something new. So let's hit Create, and this brings up a screen that gives me all the objects that I can make through Bookwrite. Photo books, trade books, magazines, lay flat books, and notebooks, and by the way, if you haven't made a notebook yet, I highly suggest you do. They're really fantastic. But let's just stick with photo books. I'm going to, just for the sake of the test, I'm going to choose Standard Landscape, and I'm going to hit Next. The next screen is asking me for a little bit more detail. What kind of paper do I want to use? I'm just going to go with Standard Paper. And it's also asking me what cover do I want. And I'm just going to go with Soft Cover. No particular reason. I just feel like doing that. It's also, depending on the ingredients that I'm asking for, it's giving me a running price of what I'm going to pay per book, which is a really nice thing to have. Now, let's say that I'm a little confused about paper types, which, you know, is a common thing. There's a lot of options. You can also order a swatch kit right here. So the swatch kit's going to show you all the paper types, all the cover types. It's a great resource to have. So if you don't have one, you should really think about ordering it. I've had one forever, and I use it all the time. But for the sake of the test, I'm just going to hit Next. I'm going to label this as a test book, and I'm going to save this to my desktop so that I can toss it when this test is over. And then I'm going to hit Start New Book. A couple of seconds goes by, and boom, here's the basic book write interface. Now, for those of you who've used this before, you know how simple and intuitive it is. If you haven't used it, don't sweat that. It's just going to take a couple of test drives to get familiar with how the program works. It's not a big deal. You'll figure this out very quickly. I want to walk you through three sections of the program. The upper left, the center, and the upper right. And I'm going to do this rather quickly. Again, it's going to take a few, a few test drives. But the first button in the upper left is the cover button. And this is going to show me that my soft cover is highlighted because that's what I ask it to build. But if I want to mock up a hardcover image wrap cover or a dust jacket cover, I can also do that. And I can even do an ebook if I want to. The next button over is the pages button. And this shows me all of the internal pages and spreads of my publication. It's a really nice thing to be able to kind of scroll and look around. And after, in a few minutes, I'm going to add some images in here. I'm going to show you this other button, which I think is very strategic. Now, let's say 
a default here, I've got 20 pages. Using this button here, I can always add more pages to the beginning, to the end. I can almost add as many as I want. There are page limitations for blurb books, but within reason, you can add so many pages. You can make a giant 400 plus page book if you want to. I can also add my page numbers here. I get this question a lot. People always think that they have to have page numbers. If you think so, you can put them basically anywhere you want in pretty much any of your fonts and sizes and, uh, and characteristics. That's where you're going to find that. The next thing I want to do is jump over to this middle section. You're going to spend a lot of time here. At the top, you've got layouts, you've got photographs, and you've got text files. I'm not going to focus on text files right now. I'm just going to stick with basic photography and also the layouts. You'll see here that when I click on the layouts tab, it brings up all these different template options here. And there are tons and tons and tons. And underneath this, this is a nice little shortcut. I've got my layouts, and then I've got one photo, two photo, three photo. So if you know you've got a, a design style in mind, let's say you want two images on a page, you can jump right there and it will give you samples of, of basically pre-made templates that can get you started. You can also design your own template. Let me repeat that. You can design your own template. So if I design this with a text box and a photo, I can save that into my layouts. And I'll show you this in a second. Uh, the next button over is the, is the photograph button, and this is where I can go to my computer and I can find images. So I'm going to go here just for now, and I'm going to select some of these just for fun. This is from a recent project. I'm going to import them in, and it shows all these photographs that I've made up here nice and ready for me to put into the, into the layout. I'm going to go back to my Layouts tab. And I'm just going to I'm choose a random spread down here. And I'm just going to choose uh, one photo. I'm going to take one template here that covers the entire width of both pages, a four-way uh, four bleed. And then I'm going to go down here, and I'm just going to drag an image in. It's as simple as that in terms of starting to build your layouts. Now, I can move this picture around if I want to. If I click on the photograph, I can change the size of the photograph. Again, I can move this around. I can rotate it. I can basically control all aspects of this photograph in the spread by this little pop-up window that showed up as soon as I clicked on the photograph. So again, pretty, pretty simple. And if it, let's say that I don't want this, I can go down here to the trash can and I can delete that photograph and I can start over. And I can go up to the layouts tab and I can choose a different layout. I can choose a different photograph, and I can design a completely different page. Now, you'll notice that when I dragged this photograph in here, I'm getting this little warning label up here in the upper right-hand corner. Don't panic. These warning, warning labels are pretty common, and all you've got to do is click on it, and it'll tell you what the problem is. And in this case, it's telling me, hey, Dan, uh, this image is not high enough resolution for you to use it in the book. And what I did was I accidentally dragged in a folder of images that were web size files instead of print size files. So the software just saved me from making a big mistake. And so to correct this, I would have to delete these files out, go back and find the print ready files and bring them in. But that's, again, it's, this happens all the time. And that's what this button here is for. This warning button is to, is to basically save you uh, from making mistakes. So let's go to another spread, and I'm just going to go up here to layouts, and I'm going to choose a couple of these double truck spreads, and I'm going to drag some images in here because I want to show you this other tool that I think is really important for editing and sequencing a book. So I'm just pulling in random photographs here, and again, you'll see I've got critical elements of this photograph that are running right through the middle of the gutter, right? Probably not a great idea. So all I've got to do is drag this over a little bit, and voila, I've got that critical element outside of the gutter of the book. So again, pretty simple, pretty intuitive. But as you can see over here, my book's starting to fill out. I'm starting to build out the pages. But this is, I can scroll up and down to see the pages, but check this out. If I hit the Manage Pages button, this shows me my entire book in spread form. This I use all the time. I think this is a wonderful tool for editing and sequencing. Now let's say that this spread here isn't in the location I want. I can grab that little tab underneath it and I can drag it anywhere I want. So when I did this project that you're looking at, I sat with another photographer and we went through the entire book dragging spreads into different places to try to get the sequence right. So this is a pretty common 
occurrence when you're bookmaking. Okay, moving on, there's a couple more things that I just want to touch on. And then again, there's so many tools in here that, uh, again, it's just going to take you a couple of times to test drive. There's a center portion here. This has your, your tools, basically. This is showing me the print safe areas. When I click this button, toggling it on and off, it's showing me these pink areas, which are the print safe. I can also turn on guides. A lot of times designers like to work with guides. Photographers like to work with guides. That's where you find them here. One more button that I use all the time is right here, which is the preview button. And the preview allows me to see the spread with no clutter around it, no other parts of the tool or the software. So I can really see what I have. I can go from spread to spread by using the arrow keys, and I can see a clean interpretation of what I have on the page. And then when I'm ready, I go back to the book and I can continue to design. So let's say this book is exactly where I want it. The last thing that I would do is hit the upload button and the the, the upload is telling me, yes, I've got some warning signs, and I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and upload it anyway. And so what it's going to do is say, look, you're now ready to upload this book, and I can go and I can upload this to the Blurb server where it's printed and shipped directly to me. So in a nutshell, that's how the Blurb BookWrite software works. Again, if you haven't used it, just practice with it a little bit. You can watch the tutorials to get a better idea if you get stuck in a particular tool. And also, another really good piece of advice is to go look, if you're designing a photography book, go look at photography books. Go to your local bookstore or go online and look and see how other people, professionals, have really designed, had edited and sequenced their books. It's really helpful. Even though I've made a lot of books, I do this on a regular basis. I'm always looking at books, and it will definitely help you when it comes to things like using book right. So good luck and happy bookmaking.